Hi all, let's have a look at another example game which has the anti Sicilian theme. So Stockfish 11 against 62076, that's Leela ID, one of the latest Leela IDs. So E4 from Stockfish 11, the opening book given is this Snyder variation, again S N Y D E R. So uh, the Snyder variation. We have Knight C6 as the recommendation from this free, short and sweet anti Sicilian course. So Bishop B2, D6, Bishop B5, and now Bishop D7. This is the end of the book. Now, uh, we had another example game where Knight F3 was played. Here, Stockfish 11 chooses D3, in fact. Tactically, this isn't a liability which can be exploited, this bishop, this loose bishop, because of queen a5 check, there's knight c3, and that's okay. So, in fact, uh, Leela just carried on with knight f6, ignoring that bishop. Knight f3, we have g6. White castles, bishop g7. Now, bishop takes c6, bishop takes c c6, c4. So, a very different structure from the other game. And I thought it's quite interesting how Leela uh, adapts to this like water. What is the adaptation to this particular kind of bind against the d5 square? So both sides have a, their own kind of padlock, white on d5 and black on d4. But does black need to play e5? That's a very interesting question. In fact, is it almost a philosophical question? Black could be potentially okay with e5. Is it best to keep it fluid? Here, yeah. what do you think? Answers in the comments if you've got any thoughts about this position in general. Uh, so, black castles, knight c3. In fact, black doesn't use e5 here. a6, which has the idea of potentially b5, that's clamped down on. And you can see Stockfish is playing a little bit like drafts, all these pawns on light squares. Uh, interesting formation. We have actually. Now, guess what? Is it e5 or e6? What would you prefer there? Okay, Leela actually chooses e6. So, some flexibility here. And you might wonder is the idea to play d5 or something? We have uh, rook e1. If white tries e5, then actually knight h5 is very nice. For black, for example, this taking here f6 e and queen e7. The, the knight can perch later potentially on f4. Black's getting a nice advantage and has got that very strong padlock on the d4 square. So e5 doesn't seem to do much. Also, <clears throat> bishop takes f3, queen takes d takes. This is fine for black as well. If queen takes b7 here, that backfires a bit. Rook b8, rook takes b3, queen takes d3, it's, it's crumbling for white. So, uh, <coughs> pardon me. So, these lines rook e1, we have knight d7 being played. So, yeah, rook e1 was chosen, not e5. Knight d7 keeps a grip over the e5 square for the moment. If black had played e5, that is pretty radical, but it's, it fixes black's structure. Then you could argue, well, this is actually quite a stable position for both sides. This kind of thing uh, is going to be fine. It's going to be, even though f5 you know, may be dangerous, this is actually okay uh, from a technical point of view. Uh, so we have this more fluid idea, you know, knight d7, don't commit to e5. So I thought that was quite interesting structurally how, you know, there, there is a very different plan here being adopted by Leela. Uh, given white's particular pawn structure here with this extra pawn on a light square uh, on c4, how the play is very different, it seems now. So after queen e2, there's actually a radical kind of positional move, which Basman would be pleased with. Uh, that's my clue to you. Guess what black plays here? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. So black to play here. So yes, Leela uses a delayed reverse grob, g5, using the move g5. So positionally trying to kick this knight to put more pressure on that central square. So uh, h3 and continuing radically h5. 
So still with ideas of g4 now. Knight d1 is played. If knight h2, it does look at the h5 pawn, but uh, d3 is slightly vulnerable here. With that pawn actually here, there's a subtlety about this position. It it has weakened d3 a bit, and and it's shown here that knight e5 is actually uh, possible to look at d3. So if queen takes, knight takes d3, and this is just uh, horrendous. After bishop takes e4, this this is going to be great for black. Uh, this kind of thing. So uh, knight e5 is is simple and strong here uh, in this position. If knight h2 was played. If f3, that closes the attack against h5. In fact, black can really celebrate the dark squares, for example, like this, getting onto the dark squares with a really comfortable position. That would be a much better for black positionally. So we have knight d1 challenging this bishop. Is the black king slightly safe, uh, slightly unsafe here? We have g4, hg, hg, knight h2. Now f5. Is black taking liberties? Mind you, there is the light square bishop, which is trying to be wrenched open as well. But what about this e file? Doesn't this mean anything for white? E takes, e takes, queen e6 check. If bishop takes g7, you might think this is a viable alternative. This position with queen e7 check, uh, this is uh, fine for black. In fact, it's more than fine. The knight's are not very happy here. Black's got this h file to really build up on with ease. So the rooks can really improve themselves. For example, like this. This would be great, a really a nice attacking position where uh, black's getting a big advantage. Okay, so, um, so queen e6 check was actually played, rook f7. And you might wonder, well, hold on a sec. This d6 pawn's hanging, isn't it? White played bishop takes g7. On queen takes d6, bishop takes b2, knight takes, there's queen g5. And here, actually, this position is rather unpleasant for white. For example, like this, with bishop e4 there. And you might think, well, why does white have to do d4 just to get knight d3 in? Well, it's it's uh, the h file is building up here. That's that's the real problem. You know, things like king g7, rook h8. So yeah, d4. If d4 is needed, uh, if queen takes d4, uh, the h file can be used immediately with rook h7 and knight f8, for example. And you can see that this this is just a phenomenal attacking position where uh, black's uh, crushing it. So uh, we have uh, rook. Sorry, bishop takes g7, not queen takes d6. So avoiding taking that pawn. King takes. And again, that pawn is avoided, actually. Knight e3, just putting pressure on f5. Here, in this case, if queen takes d6 here, queen f6, just offering the exchange of queens, leaves uh, a very interesting dynamic position. OK, white's a pawn up here. But black can build on the h file, for example, and things like knight e5, looking at d3. White's in a very passive state. For example, this is horrendous. And what else? If after knight e5, if knight f1, in fact, not even taking on d3, just the h file can be celebrated. For example, like this, where black's going to be doubling or you know crushing it here with. A kingside attack, and if rook a2, just just to show the rooks doubling, threatening checkmate with rook h1. There's actually a spectacular move here. Guess what? Black can play in this position. If I give you five seconds, what would you play in this variation? Okay, black would have knight f3 here. This is getting a killer form pawn if it's taking. Uh, so say it's ignored. It's still it's still horrendous. This kind of thing just ends up losing a rook, tactically. Uh, so that's very interesting. And if um, if we look at that again, <laughs> instead of rook a two, uh, sorry that was with f three. If, if rook a two, rook h seven. 
sorry that's what that's what we've just seen anyway so anyway so King takes um, we have so off this Knight e3 so not taking here black now defends both pawns with this nifty Queen of eight so protecting d6 and protecting f5 and it's rather desperate here that the black Queen is actually kind of stranded right now there is the possibility of rook f6 just hitting that queen and the queen has nowhere to run so it's a desperate state of affairs right now and stockfish 11 gives up a piece kind of a resignation style move knight takes f5 check yeah if knight hf1 then rook f6 check there's a little trick here but it's still losing a piece basically it's just losing a piece uh, so yes uh, so knight takes f5 giving up the piece immediately knight takes g4 rook h5 and there's still this dreaded h file f3 queen f4 check king h8 queen e3 just offering the exchange of queens that's taken this end game as you might expect is pretty good the piece against the pawns it's only two pawns for the bishop it's pretty much over actually so let's have a look at how it continues c takes here if rook d1 then after d4 i believe black should play b5 here in this variation uh to give you know potential entry points with the king coming later to b4 keeping those open that a5 could be critical otherwise there might be a, a brick wall presented an impenetrable fortress but this kind of thing there's always going to be a resource here lurking around uh, with if the king ever moved over there well the king's tied down to d3 and the king can get to b4 here if we look at this again this this line after rook d1 d4 and um, say a5 was played that leaves a killer resource in the position b4 is actually playable bishop a4 is always handy for this past pawn so if ever the king went over there there's there's always the possibility of playing bishop a4 at the right moment and just queening that pawn so okay so c takes d5 was played not rook d1 so bishop takes check and it's it's really just technique here being demonstrated uh, a bishop up white does try and get those pawns down the board there's a fixing there of the a pawn and let's just uh, fast forward through this so the king hangs around a bit there just in case the bishop is has got a nice blockade square now on c2 against these pawns and actually takes time to take that a pawn so the a pawns now free to run down the board bishop takes another block uh, blockading roll here and uh, these connected pass pawns are pretty vicious and here rook a7 yes yeah, it's, it's all over by the shouting it's all over pawns are dropping and uh, it was coming up here after a1 <laughs> just giving up uh, the pawn but anyway it was adjudicated here it's a technical win uh, for black uh, Leela sometimes gives up material just to go into a standard well-known table based position way so after that it's absolutely clear okay so it was adjudicated as a win uh, for black here and so it shows to me uh, the interesting point to me was uh, the adaptation the really dynamic adaptation to the nuances of that structure when the pawn was on c4 as opposed to c2 all of a sudden it seems to make more sense for a more fluid structural plan with e6 and g5 and in some of the lines when the knights come into e5 we can see that because the pawns on c4 d3 is weaker so this whole dark square use of e5 is slightly more effective so maybe that's why it's good to keep the e5 square open in that case when white has that structure so these are kind of structural revelations of how uh, the neural network adapts really uh Dr dramatically across two different game examples which share the same uh, start kind of opening 
but how that yeah it shows really effective play against White's pawn structure. And Leela to me is is like one of the greatest masters of pawn structure I've ever seen. So um, I hope you got something from that. Uh, the dark square a uh, square play celebration in particular uh if you want to check out the uh the core lines recommended there's a great free short and sweet anti sicilian course by grandmaster alex konovich at king's Russia tv slash free anti sicilian okay thanks very much